This is Kayvon Golistane with the Conscious Health Institute, and we're doing an interview today with a very special guest, Jackie Duffin, who is the professor of the history of medicine in the Hannah Chair at Queen's University in Kingston, Canada. Well, good afternoon, Jackie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you for uh, agreeing to be interviewed today. So uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, background. Well, I first trained as a physician in the old days when you got to go to medical school out of high school. And that meant that I was done fairly young in my life. And uh, then, later, because of things that happened to me, I ended up doing a PhD in the history and philosophy of science. Now, you did that in, um, at the Sorbonne, is that correct? I did, in Paris. And mm -hmm. then, after I'd done that, I wanted to go back to medicine. I, I hadn't really ever planned to become a historian. And mm -hmm. most historians of medicine never really plan on it. It's not something children think of when they're planning on growing up to become a fireman, historian of medicine, doctor. Um, I wanted to go back to medicine, but it was a little tough selling myself to medical colleagues because I'd been doing history for a few years in Paris and it was hard to get a medical job. So I was really lucky to get a PhD postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And then three years after that I was lucky, very lucky, to get the job I have now. And that was 23 years ago. Now the reason why I specifically mentioned uh, your studies at the Sorbonne was is that the French have a tradition of, well, shall we say, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary intellectual studies. And uh, one book in particular that I really enjoy is called The History of Medicine, A Scandalous Short Introduction, <laughs> uh, your second edition there. Thank you. And what struck me about your book there was it, it seemed to overlap disciplines. It didn't seem to be strictly a historical text. In fact, you discussed some uh, intellectual issues and philosophical issues that seemed to broach other disciplines. Do you want to mention that, uh, say something about that? Well, first of all, thank you for noticing my work. I think that's why we're conversing. And, yeah. and thank you for liking it, and uh, thank you for the compliment of thinking that it, it uses disciplines other than history. That certainly was my goal, and I think that, first of all, history is open to that kind of uh, use of other disciplines, and second of all, I feel like I'm doing both history and medicine, so that in doing medical history, I'm trying to contribute to uh, the medical profession as they are in practice, and also to future doctors in medical school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, what's the most important thing we can learn, you think, from the history of medicine? Oh, that's a tall order. But I think why I'm in the medical school, there might be other reasons that people would have history in other sectors of the world, but why am I in medical school? I think it's to help make better doctors. And my two goals, in teaching medical students are first to make them skeptical about everything else they're learning so that they understand that things change that what they're learning now as the gospel as dogma is going to change in the future in fact most of it might change in the future and they should be ready for that so making them skeptical is a number one goal and the number two goal is not so much what I want to teach them about history, but the very fact of history and showing them that research in history is relevant to current practice. So are you saying then that the study of history makes people skeptical and understand that their understanding of the present is influenced by the past? And their understanding of the past is influenced by the present? Yes, I would agree with that. But okay. um, more fundamentally, I think that understanding how we got to where we are now is very instructive in, in sort of identifying and highlighting the problems that we've got now. It, 
history is not good at predicting the future, but at least it helps to explain and contextualize what it is we are living with in the present. I see. So in your studies of the past and medicine, was there a series of developments in medical history that you could look to and say these points were very important in our development of medicine? That's an interesting question too. I think you'd get a different answer from each different historian that you might ask. Uh, we all have our favorite things and it has... But from your perspective. Yeah, from my own perspective, of course, I was very much influenced by my thesis advisor who was Mirko Gremek, uh in Paris and he suggested to me a fabulous PhD topic uh, that I had not contemplated when I first approached him to explore the history of the stethoscope. Now that might seem rather boring and small as a topic, but the stethoscope was an instrument interposed between the patient and the doctor, the use of which actually represented a moment of big change in medicine. And by that I mean that diseases were completely reconceived following the invention of the stethoscope. The stethoscope wasn't the only thing that accomplished it. The stethoscope was on, on some level kind of a manifestation of the change. But basically, diseases went from being how people felt symptoms to what the doctor finds. And to a yes. certain extent, we're, we're still living in that paradigm. So that moment is very important to me. So at that moment, there was, could we say there was a shift in authority, that the patient was no longer the authority and the doctor became more of an authority? Yes, many people have written about it that way, uh, from a guy named Stanley Joel Reiser, who's written about the history of technology, and also the very famous Michel Foucault. One of his first books was called The Birth of the Clinic, in which he Indeed. made this observation. And uh, interesting to me is that some people demonize the stethoscope as having sort of created this distance. On the other hand, most of us as consumers of healthcare are glad that the doctor can detect changes inside our bodies before we become a cadaver. That is something very worthwhile on some level because once they could sure. define it anatomically, they could begin to think of ways of fixing it. 